Hey there friends. In this video, I'm going to share nine tips for a spiritually restorative feast. These tips are based on my own understanding and experience and synthesis of what is directly given to us in the Baha'i writings. And if you want to read a little bit more about it and read the source quotes for this, you can check out the Baha'i blog article that I wrote that is linked below. So why is this important? Well, feast is a part of Baha'i life, an integral part of Baha'i life, happens once in 19 days and is composed of a devotional portion, a consultative portion, and administrative consultative, and a social portion. And not only does this help our communities grow, Personally, I see it as a model for the future of society where we work together to blend elements of prayer and reflection, consultation and action, and fellowship and intimacy and friendship. And in the meantime, before we have built the society that, that manifests these same qualities, Abdu'l-Baha tells us that if the feast is held in the proper fashion, that the friends will find themselves once in 19 days spiritually restored and endued with a power not of this world. And I would really like to experience that. And to be honest, I don't always. So why is that? Well, I think all we can do is take care of the attitudes that we bring into feast. So now we're gonna get into my nine suggestions and you might actually wanna write them down to have a little, a little cheat sheet when you need some focus. In the article, they are organized based on the quotes that they come from, but I'm gonna give them in chronological order. So starting with preparing for feast. One, array yourself in spotless clothing. Arraying yourself is a lot different than getting dressed. It really starts to bring a sense of the sacred into the most humble and mundane of actions. I was raised to dress as if I was going to meet Abdu'l-Baha. So I tend to dress a little nicer, fancier than most people, but that's not actually in the writings. That's a personal interpretation, but Checking your clothes for cleanliness and spotlessness, it's a very loving universal standard that if you're watching this video, is probably no problem for you to uphold. It just takes a little bit of mindfulness. The next step, turn your face towards the Abha kingdom. If you have the time, I really recommend taking 20 minutes before you leave for feast or even in your car to turn your face to the Abha kingdom. I'm a very literal person in some respects, so if you can face east, you know, face the Kibli and, and really body, mind, and spirit, turn yourself towards God and connect with a quiet place. Third step, connected with this, free your mind and heart. So the traffic, your day at work, what's going on with your family, that thing you might want to talk to someone at feast about during the social portion, like all of this stuff, invite it during your prayer meditation time, even if it's only a few seconds before you enter, invite it. To drift off. Free your heart and mind. And if that is a struggle for you, which I understand, just ask for help. How do I free my heart and mind? Ask for divine confirmations. And this is something I got directly from the writings. To actually ask for inexhaustible divine confirmations. Isn't that amazing? That is so amazing that this is something that we can ask for. We don't ask God for too little. We ask, no, we don't ask God for too much. We ask God for too little. So in your prayer, you can ask 
for the inexhaustible divine confirmations to be manifest and feast inwardly and outwardly in your life. So that was four. Now we're moving into how do we enter the feast. That was preparation. Now the first one, enter with lowliness and submission. The phrase is actually used that we, when we set our feet in the gathering place. And again, this brings a certain sacredness. We had our lives and now we are stepping in to the sacred place, whether that's the park that you're having feast in or the home or the Baha'i Center. That moment when your feet step into the place is a new experience. And you're there for the sake of God and enter with lowliness and submission. The next step, consider all as better and greater than yourself. So you, no matter how intimately you know these people, no matter what your background is with them, in this space, you are among people who are greater and better than yourself, which is true humility. Right? to see the greatness in others. I'm running out of time in this video. I don't know why. I think how to make happy and pleased everyone who is there. So put your attention on bringing gladness to the hearts of those around you. That's number seven. Number eight, no extraneous conversation. Yep, so none of that, like how about them spurs, and it's hard because we want to like show people that we care about them and talk about other things going on, but just meditate. What does that mean in your own experience to have no extraneous conversation before the social portion? Remember, we're there for a sacred purpose. The next step, encourage benevolent pursuits and inspire love for the human race. So when we do speak at feast, let it be an encouragement and inspiring love for the human race. Hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great feast, you guys. Bye-bye.